Davis, welcoming you to this virtual product demo for all things Sub-Zero, Wolf, and Cove. Your quick exploration into the beauty and functionality of these tremendous brands. We want to give you as much information as we possibly can in the next hour or so while giving you a few practical cooking demonstrations here on some of the Wolf appliances. So before we get started, let me just make a couple of notes to you so you can uh, kind of stow these away for the future. First is the link that you use to attend today's live streamed event will also take you to the recorded version in the future. So save the email that you received sometime uh, during today and you can use that link if you need to revisit, if you need to remind yourself a little bit about some of the features on the convection steam oven or perhaps some of the options you would have on a dual fuel range, you can go back and use the link in the email to revisit those parts of the class. Secondly, when you have a question, we would love you to ask your questions today during the live streamed event. So please, please, please use the chat feature on your YouTube link, type in your question, Denver is behind the scenes today on the computer board. He will get those questions in real time and then relay them to me. I will try to answer them as quickly as I possibly can without breaking too much of the flow of today's event. But we want to get those questions answered for you. We don't want you to have to wait until later, type it into the chat feature, and then all of a sudden you have to wait to get a response. And it could take you know a few days. So we want to get those questions answered for you today. And then last but not least, um, we'll be... Uh, uh, just you can always come back to this channel to get other content if there's other things you want to learn about say you want to come to the discovery class on the convection steam oven you can certainly sign up at the same place that you signed up for this class rothliving.com um, depending on which uh, market you're in you can just go to the page for that particular market whether you're in minneapolis or salt lake city or either in here in denver and then just click on the links that you would like to attend we offer both live and virtual classes so if you're in the neighborhood of one of the showrooms you can certainly attend one of our live events as well. All right, so just uh, that being said, we're gonna get ahead and go right into it. And we're gonna start kind of at the back end where I normally finish. I'm gonna start tonight um, talking about an appliance that just has a buzz about it. Everybody's interested in the Wolf Convection Steam Oven. What makes a convection steam oven such a remarkable tool? Well, it's because it can marry both steam and dry air together at the same time. You get the benefits of both, right? And one of those benefits, obviously, is just the utilization of pure steam. So if you're cooking vegetables or maybe you want to steam some fresh seafood, um, you can use that beautiful, gentle steaming process to give you a beautiful uh, a soft and succulent piece of fish or nicely steamed bright green vegetables just on the touch of a button. No waiting for water to boil on the stove. You can just pop it right in. And let's do a quick example of how that works by making a dessert. So we'll start at the end and then we'll work backwards through the rest of this menu. And we're gonna make a quick custard here. So what I've got is just some fresh egg yolks here and I'm gonna add some granulated sugar and a little bit of cocoa powder. We're making a chocolate custard. Right, so we're just gonna whisk that together, right? And one of the beauties of that convection steam oven is that you don't have to preheat it. Particularly when you're cooking with steam, there is no need to preheat the oven. The steam is gonna be produced instantaneously, and then you can just go right ahead and cook whatever it is you need to cook. So in this case, we're gonna to add to our chocolate. We've got a little bit of vanilla extract here, and then you can add whatever sort of liqueur you like, or you can omit it if you'd like. I'm gonna add a little Grand Marnier. I love the combination of chocolate and orange. It's one of my favorite flavors. So now let's just stir that together. You don't have to do much more than this. You can see how quickly this goes together. Right, so now all we've done, taken a little heavy cream, we put it on the stove, we just scalded it quickly so it's just nice and hot, and we just wanna stir that into our base. We don't need to cook this, right? We just need to stir the base together so it's nice and smooth. There we go. All right, so just stir it together. And once that's blended, all we wanna do is strain it really quickly. Now you notice I have set up in front of me, I've got my ramekins set up in front of me and they're on a very particular pan. And this is a pan that comes with your convection steam oven designed 
specifically for steaming um, or just using, you can use it as a baking sheet if you want to put some parchment paper on it. But in this case, we've just got our perforated tray. I don't know if you can see that, but you can just see on the camera perhaps that this has some nice holes in it. Right? We're going to arrange our ramekins on the tray and then just pour in your custard mix. So I'm going to show you just how quickly this goes together, right? Pour it in. That's why it's easier to use a measuring cup here. So now the nice thing about the convection steam oven, the current model of the Wolf convection steam oven, has a reservoir that it doesn't require a water line. It just has a reservoir that holds water from your kitchen tap. You don't need special water. You don't need to get distilled, deionized, or any other special kind of water. You can just use water from the tap. It's then plugged into the reservoir in the oven and it's completely self-contained. Now, how long can you steam before you need to add more water? Well, about two, two and a half hours. So here's our convection steam oven right here on the wall. You can see it's just a small cavity. It's 24 inches, but don't worry. We're actually coming out next year with a larger sized cavity, be 30 inches wide, um, have two convection fans in it. So that's very exciting news for those of us who love the convection steam oven. So now we have our tray. We're going to just slide it in. You can see how it fits beautifully into these racks. And then all we're going to do is use the oven using the steam mode. So we're just going to use the steam mode. I'm going to scroll over and set the temperature. One more. There we go. Perfect. And voila, in 30 minutes, we have perfectly steamed custards ready to go, put into the fridge, and then you can see how quickly you can put that together. Obviously something you could do first thing in the morning. So the convection steam oven, not just a steamer though, just that steam mode for making custards, steaming vegetables, cooking some seafood, but also it can just be a convection oven. So when you want to just bake a loaf of bread, make some cakes, some cookies, biscuits, whatever you like, there is dry air as a simple function of the ovens, right? So your two basic functions are steam and dry air. But now where the convection steam oven really begins to set itself apart is the combination modes, right? The, the ability to use steam and dry air together. Where does that benefit you? Well, first and foremost, the steam, because it's much more efficient at transferring heat from the oven to the food, it's gonna cook your food much more quickly, right? So the same temperature is going to cook the food faster because it's using steam, right? To transfer the heat and therefore cook the food a little quicker, but also dry air in order to brown and crisp. I know it seems counterintuitive to say, hey, roast your potatoes using a little bit of steam to get them nice and crispy. Well, the way that the oven works is the potatoes go in, the steam helps cook the potatoes on the inside, essentially steaming the potatoes. But then as the oven heats up and reaches its preset temperature, now the hot air takes over and voila, you start having roasted potatoes. So even faster because you're doing it all in one operation. And again, the oven doesn't need to be preheated in order to perform that operation. So you save all that time on the front end as well. So it can be a real time saver for you when you're using those combination modes of convection heat and steam, right? Pre-programmed. You don't have to worry about saying, oh, I want this much steam for this long or this. You just set the temperature, you set the time, or you use your temperature probe, which comes with the oven, so that when you want to roast pieces of meat, whether you're doing a prime rib or a beef tenderloin, and you want to make sure that that internal temperature is exactly where you'd like it, right? The oven will then read through the probe. You don't need to even set a timer. You're just cooking with the temperature on the probe. And so it goes really quickly and you get that specific, precise measure internally using the convection steam functions in the oven. So it really does make a difference. And let's not even begin to talk because I mean, we're going to be here all day if we talk about its reheating capabilities. You know, many of you are probably reheating your leftovers or th uh, things left over here from the holidays in your microwave, right? And you know that sometimes microwaves can be a little uneven the way they heat. Yes, they're very fast. But if something is not completely heated through or part of the plate is heated and the other part is not, or you get kind of weirdly heated items, well, 
That's kind of frustrating, right? But in the convection steam oven, because we're using steam, which is all enveloping to rehydrate the food. So even if your food is a couple of days in the refrigerator, but you've, and it's dried out a bit, you tuck it in the convection steam oven, you reheat using a little bit of steam first to reinvigorate that food, to re-energize it, re-moisturize it. Then it uses the convection function to reheat that food and get it to that perfect serving temperature. And the other beauty of this versus a microwave in terms of a reheating tool is the fact that you can reheat multiple plates at the same time. Because I can put two racks of plates in there at the same time, now I can do four plates simultaneously and I'm not doing the sort of, you know, one plate in, one plate out, you know, you're not just doing that, you can do it all at once and get even reheating for all of your reheated leftovers and things like that. So from a reheating standpoint, it really doesn't have an equal, right? There's no way a microwave can touch it in that. What can't this oven do? Well, right now, all it can't do is it can't pop your popcorn. It can't heat up your coffee when it goes cold in the morning. And right now it can't melt cheese on the top of your French onion soup. But as I said before, as I alluded to before, the new generation of convection steam ovens is due out in early 2023, and that oven will include a broiler. So now you'll be able to do all the functions that a traditional oven can do, in addition to having steam and all of those, because it'll have the broiler. So you can do those melting, you can do that browning and crisping using the broiler element that will be inserted into the new generation of convection steam ovens coming up very, very quickly here in 2023. So very exciting, you know, with the convection steam oven, I will tell you right now, you put a convection steam oven in your kitchen, in your suite, depending on how you love to cook, this oven is going to be the oven you use 80% of the time because you're not preheating it. You can do so many different things. It re-moisturizes and reinvigorates your food. It cooks faster. All of those things and gives you the, the functionality of both a microwave and a convection oven with the addition of steam. So, I mean, you really can't go wrong. So definitely, as you're looking at your oven suite, in your remodel, in your redesign, in your new build, whatever it might be, I would definitely consider putting a convection steam oven in. You can see how small of a footprint it can take up. Only 24 inches wide if you want it to be, or again, next year, a 30 inch wide model um, for the cavity can give you a lot of functionality. So convection steam oven is just one way that a Wolf appliance can really add to your peace of mind and your creativity and inspiration in your own kitchen. But you know, we all need to have a full format convection style oven. And let's gonna walk over to the next vignette and talk a little bit about Wolf convection ovens, right? Because a convection oven, right, is pretty much the standard for everybody now. We all have a convection oven of some kind in our kitchen usually. And the beauty of a Wolf convection with its dual flow convection system is that it has now taken convection to another level. You know, when we talk about convection as a theory, as a, a way that it helps assist in, its, in the cooking process, we have to talk about circulating air. We have to talk about even heat because that was the original intent for convection. We wanted to even out the heat in the oven. So we added those fans. We didn't, but, you know, Wolf wasn't the first one to build a convection oven. But back when we added convection fans to an oven, we were just trying to use those fans to circulate air throughout the oven cavity so that we would get a more even distribution of heat from the bottom to the top, side to side, and front to back. So then you could bake, hopefully, on all three or four tr trays at one time and expect very similar results without having to do a lot of fussing inside of the oven, you know, by spinning pans back and forth, all of those things. The one problem with that was that while the fans were still circulating the air, the heat was being generated primarily from the lower portion of the oven. So naturally, the bottom of the oven was a little hotter because it was closer to that heat source. So even though the fans are moving the air, now you have a hotter zone near the oven. So you're still having to kind of be very mindful, watch it very closely, may still have to shuffle the pans. We don't want to do that. So how did Wolf improve upon that? How did we make convection in our ovens a little bit better? Well, what we've done is, is that we've added, we've added a second fan. So now instead of a singular fan in the back of the oven, we have two. So let me just clear that. We have two fans in the back. And in addition to that lower heat element underneath, sorry, let me make it stop beeping. There we go. 
but the lower in the um, with the two fans. But now we've taken those two fans and we've wrapped them with their own heating elements. So now when Wolf is using the convection system, we can turn this lower element completely off. So now we don't worry about too much heat from the bottom of the oven because all the heat is being generated by those two convection fans and their elements behind the back wall. And those fans circulate the air in such a way that we never have to worry that the top and the middle and the bottom trays bake differently because the air is constantly circulating, constantly in motion, so we're getting very even heat top to bottom. Those two elements, plus the element and the bottom and the broiler element, which comes standard and obviously in all of our convection ovens, right, allow us to create 10 separate cooking modes in the oven. So a mode is like bake is a mode, roast is a mode. All of these modes, right, are designed to optimize the performance of the oven for your particular cooking process. I think we can all agree, right, that roasting a 20 pound turkey at Thanksgiving is a very different cooking operation than say baking three trays of chocolate chip cookies or three trays of Christmas cookies here for the holidays. While we're using the same appliance, the results are fairly different. The time is certainly different. And maybe the way we want the, the air to circulate in the oven should be different. Well, that's what these modes do. They allow you to dial in the proper mode for what it is you're cooking, right? And because you are all lucky enough to live within the Roth living distribution area, we offer training, right, at our showrooms for anyone who decides to go ahead and purchase these appliances. You're invited to an ownership training so that you don't just walk into that oven on day one, look at 10 different cooking modes and think to yourself, holy cow, I have no idea when do I use bake, when do I use convection, when do I use convection roast, when do I use dehydrate, when do I use roast versus convection roast? What are the differences? We need to explain that to you. We make sure that you get to come in, spend a couple of hours with one of our chefs so that you can know exactly how to use this remarkably fine-tuned appliance. And when I say remarkably fine-tuned, you know, that's a really good example of how the Sub-Zero Wolf Corporation tests these appliances to maximize their efficiency and their performance. And, you know, we test this to, with using a cake. We bake the same cake, the same Betty Crocker white cake at the, the factory in Madison, Wisconsin, where all of these appliances are still being manufactured right there in Madison. We test those ovens by putting the same cake in there over and over and over. We just keep baking the cake and then we take a picture of that cake. And when we take a picture of that cake, we feed the data from that picture into a computer and the computer analyzes the surface of that cake to say, well, it was a little less brown in this little tiny quadrant over there than it was on the rest of the cake. So what the engineers can then do is adjust the convection system so that you can expect exact results every single time you use it because of those testing modules, we can make sure that that convection system is acutely tuned to making your items come out consistently, evenly, every single time. And that goes into every Wolf convection oven we build, whether it's this model, the E-Series, perhaps it's one of our M-Series models, or it's in our dual fuel ranges. All of those ovens are taste tested exactly the same way for that same type of performance at the factory before they're released out to you, so you can expect it. So I've got some chicken thighs that I've roasted slowly in here, right? I've only roasted them at about 250 degrees using our temperature probe, right? And so we've, you can see we have this beautiful rolling out rack. I really love these racks as they just gently roll out on their little ball bearing glider. So it makes it very easy to work. I'm gonna put a little glaze on them, made a little teriyaki glaze as well here to go on my chicken thighs. I'm just gonna brush that on there. And so then we can give it a little bit of a glaze using Either we can use a, a different mode or we could just use the broiler element, whatever we want to use, right? But you can just see how easy it is to work. And this is just one of those little design functions, having that, these roll out full extension glide racks, it's really a nice thing. You don't realize it until you haven't had one. And then you get, you know, you go to your cousin's house and you get to use their oven after you've used yours at home. And you're like, boy, it certainly is easier to, uh, to use my oven at home when I can just roll out the rack just like this, spread my glaze on without having to do too much to uh, 
reposition the tray. And so now I'm going to roll that back in. And we're just going to give it a little bit of convection roast, right? So on this oven, when we want to do convection roast, we just simply turn the oven on. We select convection roast right here. Set our temperature on this side. We're going to do a quick 375 degree glazing of those and we just hit start enter and now our oven is automatically programmed to use the convection fans to circulate air to get that more efficient cooking method done but also now we're employing our broiler element to give ourselves a little bit of browning on top right and that's the beauty of all of these different modes again engineered as a collaboration between the engineer, the design engineers at Sub-Zero and the chefs who work at Sub-Zero in the factory. They are collaborating together to design those modes so that you get the exact type of cooking that you want when you choose that mode for whatever it is you're doing. And in this case, we're just trying to glaze and brown. So again, the Wolf Convection Oven line of ovens, whether it's, again, dual fuel M or E series, all engineered the same way, all with different looks, depending on your personality and what you would like your kitchen to say about you. Whether you like a more transitional, more traditional style with a little more glass and a little bit less stainless, or perhaps you prefer a more contemporary style where there's no handles whatsoever. You're using everything pushed to open, so it's very clean and very sleek, very modern, right? We have that line as well. And then also the line that I prefer the most, which is the professional line, the line that looks like it belongs in a commercial kitchen, the heavy handles, the big red iconic knobs that you see on all Wolf appliances, right? You can have whatever style you like designed for you, right? So it fits seamlessly into your kitchen design. So just remember that just because you see the look of this oven, doesn't mean that this is the only way this oven comes. Same technology on the inside, but slightly different interface and slightly different look, depending on which model you would choose for your kitchen. So that's really one of the great things about the Wolf line. You can really customize it to suit not only your kitchen and cooking style, but your cooking personality, how you feel expresses the most about you in the kitchen, right? So enough about ovens. We're going to let this glaze for a second and let's talk about the glamour shots, right? Cooking out on the burners, right? Whether we're going to use induction or gas, we want to talk about some of the innovation that Wolf brings to both, right? And I know many of you, and I know this has become very common recently, more and more people are looking at induction, whether they're being told by various uh, uh, legal entities that someday they won't be able to put gas in um, their new build, or perhaps they like the look of a sleek induction cooktop, or perhaps they're just a little nervous about having open flames in their kitchen for a while. Maybe you're looking now at induction a little more seriously. And the beauty of induction, and especially wolf induction, is that it really tries to mimic how gas cooks, right? Because that's really the, the gold standard for many of us is gas cooker. We all associate gas cookware or gas cooking appliances with professionals, with, with restaurants, with all of that high level cuisine. We've always looked at gas as being the way to do that, right? But we needed to offer that alternative um, for people who either can't put gas in there or they, uh, their home, or they would prefer something a little less, um, well, Ma lower maintenance, if you will, in terms of cleaning and things like that. And induction really suits that. But we had to make it so that induction fit that. And so what does that mean? It meant that our induction needs to give you those highs, right? Those true highs when you need to sear, when you need to saute, when you need to do all of those high heat cooking operations. But it also needs to have the control over the lower end of the spectrum, because if it doesn't, you're going to get really frustrated when you can't get a good simmer, right? When you're wanting, trying to simmer a pot of soup, or you're just trying to hold something at a nice consistent temperature, you need the functionality of a lower, a better control, more precise control over lower temperatures. And that's what we've done with Wolf Induction. It gives you the full range, just like gas does, because you all know that when gas is off, it's off, right? You don't have any residual heat, right? Same thing is true with induction. Some of the other advantages that induction has over gas is that it is more efficient in terms of how much heat is being transferred. In other words, there is no gap between the pan when it sits on induction versus the pan when it sits on gas. You can obviously see on this burner, there's a slight gap between the burner and the pan. So you're gonna lose a little bit of heat in the translation between the burner and the pan. Whereas with induction, 
you have almost 100% efficiency in terms of heat transfer. So you're not wasting any energy when you're using induction, right? So here's a great example of how induction with a wolf range works and how quickly it works. You probably have all seen the boiling water thing where someone puts a pot of water onto the induction stove and then they boil three cups of water in 38 seconds or something very, very quick, right? Which is nice, right, when you need to boil water quickly, but how many of us boil water that frequently? Unless we cook a ton of pasta or, uh, you know, just doing a lot of that kind of uh, cooking, then we probably won't boil water that quickly. But if you want to saute something, well, let's just show how quickly this can transfer. So what I've got behind me here coming out of the freezer is a saute pan. So I'm going to put my saute pan right out of the freezer, going to turn it on, going to heat it up, Right, I want to show you how quickly this is going to heat up. So I've got just a little bit of vegetable oil here, and you're going to see how quickly this pan can go from literally ice cold, right, right out of a five below zero freezer to the point where it can now saute, brown, sear, all of those things very, 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 very quickly. So already we're starting to see the oil expand. We're getting a little bit of heat expansion on the oil, so it's getting hot very quickly. Remember that with induction versus gas, your pan is going to make a big difference in terms of the quality of how not only the pan performs, but how the quality of your cooktop performs, right? So the better the quality of your cookware, the better you're going to get performance on your, on your pan, right? You're going to get much better performance both ways when you have good quality cookware. So it's a good investment to make, particularly when you're using induction. Again, with our induction, we are grading that heat curve so that it more mimics gas. So greater control over lower end temperatures, a very slow rise. But then near the end, when we get up to the medium high and high, then it goes up very steeply. So we get a really sharp jump in how hot the pan can get. So already this pan is nice and hot. We've got some fresh vegetables here. We're just going to put them in and already we're getting a nice, already hot. So what did that take? Less than a minute to get the pan nice and hot. The pan was ice cold, frozen solid, but you can see how efficient the induction is. It's given you instantaneous response in terms of how quickly it heats up and conversely, it, that's as quickly as it's going to cool down as well, right? So we just see how quickly this is cooking, right? Just beautiful. Now, don't worry. You see me shaking the pan on the induction. A lot of people get nervous. They think, oh, it's a glass cooktop. I'm going to scratch it. I'm going to damage it, all of those things. Don't worry about this. So long as you're using a good quality pan, you're keeping it without banging it against it, because it's still glass, right? It's not likely to scratch. What it is likely to do is crack. You drop something on a heavy piece of glass or something heavy on a piece of glass, it's going to crack. So you want to try to avoid that. So in this case, you can see, look how hot that is already, right? From an, I mean, this handle is freezing cold, right? But the pan is super super hot and it's doing exactly what we want it to do. So again, that quick response time on induction, simply fantastic. And then when we need to take the temperature down, we can literally just go straight down and that just takes the heat right out of it. And I don't have to worry. I can set it at a simmer and now this pan will cool beautifully. I don't have to worry about burning, but I have full control over the temperature of the pan just the way I would on gas, right? So again, when you're considering induction and you're thinking about Induction is perhaps part of your kitchen suite. I always like to recommend a little bit of gas and a little bit of induction if you can do it, right? So for me, I'd like a little more gas and less induction, but it's nice to have those couple of induction burners and maybe it's a module form, just 15 inches wide, tuck that off to the side when you need to boil a quick pot of water. Maybe you wanna just cook a quick fried egg and you don't wanna heat up your, your, your gas range. You can just use your induction uh, cooktop for doing that. So it's a nice, thing to pair side by side with gas, but knowing that wolf induction is going to give you the same performance that the gas will. So don't, don't be nervous if you're, think, if you're thinking about induction and you're thinking, oh, it's not going to cook as well as my old gas cooktop or my old gas range. It actually is probably going to cook a little bit better. You just are going to be more limited in your options in terms of size and configuration. Um, it only comes in three sizes, well, four sizes actually, 15, 24 inches, 30 and 36 inches. That's pretty much the extent of the Wolf induction line. There's only four choices, or you can get two different size ranges as well. So let's just have a quick peek now at how our chicken thighs are. Just see them just browning a little bit now here. So we're going to give them just a tiny bit more to get a little bit crispy. Then we're going to pop those out. But you can see how quickly the pan cooled down. Again, 
This is where induction really does uh, r replicate gas with that. When it's off, it's off. When it's on, it's giving you the performance that you want, right? So as we transition away from induction, let's start talking about wolf gas and talk about one of the things about wolf gas that I think is most important to drive home. And that is that all wolf gas burners, every single one that we make, right, on a, bur on, a, on a cooktop, on a range top, on a dual fuel range, on an all gas range, whatever it might be, we have a technology called dual stack burner technology. And what that is, is our answer towards expanding the heat range on your wolf gas cooking appliance, right? So whatever appliance you own, you're going to have this dual stack technology in all those gas burners. And what that means is, is essentially that every burner that we build is two burners in one. The first burner, the primary burner, this here, you can't hardly see it because I know the lights are kind of washing out, but this high flame, when you need that power, right? Just like here, when we were sauteing our vegetables, we need that burner that gives us the power, right? So we can get that water boiled quickly, so we can fry, so we can sear the outside of a steak using our cast iron skillet, whatever it might be. We need that power. Every single burner has that primary burner on top that has full heat control. I like to call infinite heat control. You just dial it in exactly where you want it, right? And that gives you that control. But maybe that's not enough to take it down to that lower heat setting. Maybe we can't go quite low enough. And the way Wolf solved that was by building a secondary burner into every single one. So on each burner control knob, you'll see two sets of markings. The first set controls the heat on the primary burner, right? Full set of, of equipment underneath it. It's gas valve, mixing chamber. Everything is there underneath built in, right? But now that second set of markings is tied to a second, complete second set of equipment built into the burner so that I can now go from low back to high, but now I'm high on the secondary burner, which is a more restricted gas flow. So it's less heat, less energy. And now I can turn that all the way down to where I can literally put my hand on the grate. The burner is on, by the way, the secondary burner is on and I can lay my hand on this grate without burning myself. Shows you how much control you have over that heat. And a great example of that would be right here in this pot that I have next door to this burner. And in that pot I have, I hope you can see it on the camera, those are chocolate chips, right? Those chocolate chips have been in this pan and on the burner with the burner ignited. It is now 332 uh, in Denver. So um, they've been on the burner with the burner ignited since about 1.30 this afternoon. So a couple of hours they've been sitting on the heat, right? With the heat on, on the pan. And you can definitely see that they are chocolate chips. But if I take my spatula and I move to the pan and I stir the chocolate chips, you can see that in fact, the chocolate chips are fully melted, right? Completely liquid, now ready for using for baking or dipping or whatever I might need melted chocolate for. But they were being held at such a precise and accurate temperature with my secondary burner that they could not give off their shape. The sh there was not enough energy to cause the, the chocolate to fully liquef liquefy from its shape. So it would be held in exactly that form for an indefinite period of time. So the control that you're getting, the precision that you're getting in every single gas burner that we build, right, gives you that expanded range. If I need the high to boil water, I've got it. But if I need the low to melt chocolate, to hold butter, to hold a sauce, to just simmer something at the very barest, barest movement on the surface of my liquid, I can do that because my range has been expanded by the dual stack burner technology. And again, it doesn't matter which cooktop or which range top or which range that you purchase if you're purchasing a gas appliance. This technology exists in every single burner that we built. So you don't have to go to the top of the line. You can buy this four burner gas cooktop, which is the smallest gas cooktop that we make and that technology is included. So it's not like you have to pay a premium in order to get this. This is just how Wolf builds its gas burners. And again, this chocolate can be held. I'm gonna leave that burner on. I'm gonna leave it on the stove. I can leave that chocolate there literally indefinitely until it needs to be taken out and used or maybe put into molds, whatever I'm going to do with it. 
And now you can see how my, my, this is now at a simmer, just holding, I'm gonna turn that off. And let's just pull our chicken out of the oven as we walk back over. Beautiful. So there's my beautifully glazed chicken thighs that have been slow roasted, slow roasted to preserve all that flavor. But now I've got these and I'm gonna bring them back over here. There we go, and you can see here's the temperature probe that's included with all of our convection ovens. So this temperature probe makes sure that I have a very accurate temperature for everything that I've roasted doing that. So I'm just gonna transfer these to my tray here. Look at that, looks beautiful. Crispy skin, but nice and moist and juicy on the inside. And I know that I have an accurate temperature because I used my probe. So there we go, got our beautiful chicken thighs there. We'll just garnish those with a little bit of scallions just because we need a little color, right? Perfect, all right. So, you know, we talked about the dual stack burner. Again, standard equipment for all Wolf gas appliances. But if you choose to go with the Wolf dual fuel or all gas range, or what we call a sealed burner range top, right? You have some choices about what you might place in the center of that item, provided you're making a range top that's 36 inches wide, 48 inches wide, or even 60 inches wide. Um, that would give you choices in terms of what you put in the center of your range, right? So my favorite appliance for that is this, the infrared griddle, the Wolf infrared griddle. A remarkable tool, great to have. I know a lot of you are looking at this and thinking to yourselves, great, I make pancakes once every three weeks. What do I need a griddle for? Well, you'd be surprised what you can you do on your griddle, right? If you're just gonna be creative. Thinking about making 12 or 14 grilled cheese sandwiches simultaneously. Well, let's just do that. When all the kids are over and you wanna make a bunch of those together, there you go. You've got it, right? You can do it all right in front of you. And the attributes of the griddle are really remarkable. So as we talk about those, let's do a little bit of cooking on there. Ah, let's pause for one second because just sounds like my custard's finished. I can hear the chime on my custard, so let's pop those out. Now you're gonna notice, as I open the door, a lot of steam is gonna come out of this oven. Look at that beautiful puff of steam, right? Don't worry, if you have nice cabinetry or something above the steam oven, there's not enough contact between the steam and the cabinet, it's not gonna damage it. So don't worry about that. But I do recommend that if you are considering a convection steam oven in your kitchen, mount it at a height about chest level. Make it much easier to work with. Then you don't also take a face full of steam every time you open up the oven. So it's much safer when we do that. So now we're gonna slide our custards out. And you can see that there's just a little bit of a jiggle to that. So I'm gonna pop them over here into my Sub-Zero refrigerator. You know, and just to take a second to mention what Sub-Zero is all about. You know, this is where this company started, was with the Sub-Zero line of appliances. Sub-Zero is the parent company of the Sub-Zero group and we started back in 1947 in Madison, Wisconsin. I see we are still headquartered there in Madison, but the Sub-Zero is a remarkable tool. In fact, I think in many ways the Sub-Zero is the heart of your kitchen because it preserves your food in such a way that you can be ensured each time you open up that refrigerator to take out those ingredients, to prepare whatever masterpiece you've got planned for that evening or for that day, that those products are going to be perfectly ready to cook, right? Your vegetables are gonna be fresh. Your milk is gonna stay nice and sweet. All of those things are gonna be lasted for a number of reasons, but primarily because in a Sub-Zero we control temperature and we control humidity through a series of engineering feats, right? That make sure that the humidity in your refrigerator is just so that your produce does not wilt, that it lasts much, much longer. The temperature is controlled within three quarters of a degree of your set point, so you're not getting great temperature fluctuations. That allows your dairy and your deli meats and cheeses to stay fresher for much, much longer because of the consistency between the temperature and the humidity in the refrigerator. We've also added in all of our full-size refrigeration units, 
an air purification system that strips the air of mold, mildew, bacteria, and odors so that you don't get foul smelling things in your refrigerator because every 20 minutes this very advanced space age system using titanium dioxide and ultraviolet light activates and filters the air inside of your refrigerator so that all bad smells and things that might not be so good for your fresh food are stripped out of the air and stored in that filter automatically, right? And it's a filter that only needs to be replaced once a year. So it's not like remembering how to replace that box of baking soda every month. Now you're using that filter to take all those micro microscopic particles out of the air and keep your refrigerator so much fresher. So a sub-zero for me is where you start. You start with that because if your ingredients are not up to snuff, it doesn't matter how beautiful your cooking appliances are, you're never going to come up with a great product. So the Sub-Zero really makes all the difference knowing that that product is perfect when it goes into the, into the pan or onto the griddle. So let's go back to the griddle, right? So the infrared griddle. Now infrared's kind of a funny name. It sounds like it's something from Buck Rogers that we're cooking with some kind of ray or space thing. That's not what it means at all. It just means that underneath this half inch thick alloy steel plate, we have two burners, in this case two burners, that when heated up nice and hot, they glow a very red color. And so, because they're glowing red, we call it an infrared uh, griddle, but now it gives us very, very consistent heat. So we're gonna start by just browning up a little bit of roasted pork belly. We're gonna make a little fried rice here, right? So we're gonna start with our pork belly up here in the top. Just cook that off. Now, to the bottom of that, we're going to just put right below it, I've got some freshly diced carrots. And I'm going to put that right below it here. And then last but not least, I'm going to add a little bit of ginger. I've got some very finely chopped ginger for my carrots. And then I'm going to put a little down here at the bottom. And now I've got some cooked rice, right? I've got some beautifully cooked white rice, just steamed off. This can be day old rice. It can be rice that came from the, from the restaurant that you just didn't get a chance to eat and you wanna make some fried rice. So we're just gonna put that here. Now what I've got on this griddle is two zones of heat. Zone here, zone here, right? So if I wanna do two different things, if I'm making breakfast one morning, and I want to do my eggs and maybe my bacon on this side. But over here, I want to do some pancakes. Maybe I want to do some uh, French toast. Now I can have a different heat depending on what I need in terms of the heat for cooking. So I'm going to split it up. That's a fantastic thing about the wolf griddle is now on this double size, I can split that up. So again, half inch alloy steel to 18,000 infrared burners underneath. And this is the important part about the griddle. It is controlled by a thermostat, all right? So I'm not guessing about what temperature I need. I know that I have this set at 375. I set this side right now at 225. So I know exactly how hot the metal is because the thermostat inside of, my, of the plate is accurately reading the temperature of the metal on which I am cooking. And I don't have to worry about one side overheating or underheating because it's always gonna come back to the temperature where I have it set. So that's one of the great things about this griddle. There's no guesswork in terms of how hot it is going to be. I know exactly how hot it's going to be, right? I, I can do that by setting it on my thermostat, right? And I just love this idea of being able to cook out in front of you. So maybe you don't want a griddle. Maybe a griddle for you is like, nah, I don't need a griddle. I'm never gonna cook that way. But I live in a place where it snows so much that I can never grill outside because it's just too cold. Right? Maybe you live way up in the upper peninsula of Michigan or your northern Wisconsin or whatever it might be where it's a lot of snow, a long time. You don't want to go outside when it's 40 below and try to grill because your grill's not going to work that well anyway. So you can put a char broiler, an, an indoor grill, right? Which has wonderful control, high to low, very accurate, very nicely designed so you don't get a lot of interior smoke in your kitchen. A char broiler might be an alternative for you as well. And then if you really want to harken back to the, the days when Sub-Zero or Wolf, excuse me, was just a purely commercial brand, right? 
you can get yourself a French top, right? What's a French top? Well, the French top is the, the original cooking device. It's literally just a plate of cast iron with a single burner underneath it. You heat that up, just there's only one setting on, you just turn it on, and then you just put your pans on top of that plate and you just shuffle them around and find the ideal spot. If that's the way you would like to cook or you spend some time working in a fancy French restaurant once upon a time, then I would invite you to invest perhaps in a French top. I think you'll find that that's a fun way to cook once you've mastered that technique. So we're gonna let this stuff brown just a little bit more. I've got a little bit more of my vegetable oil. I'm gonna put it over here on the slightly cooler side and we're just going to um, spread around because if we're gonna have fried rice, we gotta put a little bit of egg in it. So I've just got a couple of eggs here and we'll just drop these right on the griddle. And we're gonna let those go, right? So there we go. So now you can start to see how this is starting to look how beautiful and crispy that's getting on our pork belly. Can you see that? I hope you can see it on the camera. We're starting to see a little nice crispiness on our pork belly right there. Now our carrots are starting to saute as well. We're getting some nice color there, but can you see how much fun this would be, right? Great way to cook this way. Everything's out in front of you, right? Now you're probably wondering to yourself, okay, how hard is it to maintain? How much do I have to clean it? It's not as hard as you think, right? You can see how beautifully patinaed this griddle is, how nice color is nice and even. That's almost making it a non-stick surface, right? No Teflon, just cast iron, right? But it's like having a beautifully seasoned cast iron skillet in the middle of your range. Again, this is just one of the options that you would have if you're talking about having a Wolf dual fuel, all gas range or sealed burner range top as part of your kitchen suite. You can include a griddle, whether it's a half size, the standard size or the full double size. You can go either way with it. But again, it's just so much fun to have this. So now we can see our rice just starting to crisp up. So we're just gonna give that quick little stir. So we're getting all the sides of the rice nicely browned. So again, if you are in the neighborhood of one of our showrooms, remember the, the Roth showrooms located across the Midwest, the upper Midwest and the Rocky Mountains. So here in Denver or Salt Lake City, perhaps you're near the Minneapolis showroom, Kansas City or St. Louis. You know, we definitely would think it to, will be, behoove you to make an appointment if you're in the neighborhood to spend some time with one of our consultants, one of our chefs in the showroom, come in, see these appliances live, get a feel for it. You know, we can put them up on a video wall, put your entire suite up there so you can see them in real sizes, real life-size pictures of those appliances side by side. And you can decide, you know, I like this look better than that look. It really will help you if you come into one of those showrooms and make the time to do that. I really do encourage it. I mean, there's one thing to look at it here on your computer screen uh, or on your phone. I hope not on your phone, but um, to, to see it, um, to see it live, to cook on it, to see it in action really will help you. So let's just blend these together now. I'm gonna blend that in. And here's our eggs. We're just gonna take those and just kind of scramble those a little bit. But can you see how nicely, look, see how that with no stick, right? Look at those eggs not sticking, right? We've only used a little bit of vegetable oil to not stick our egg to the surface, but we just use a slightly lower temperature and that's really making a difference here. So we wanna make sure we season a little bit, a little bit of kosher salt. We're gonna put a little bit of black pepper. Maybe a lot of black pepper. And then the last thing we're gonna do, we got a little bit of really good Japanese soy. We're just gonna make a little hole right here. First, let's just get our eggs and then let's put our eggs in. And just so you know, right? I mean, all of these, all of your griddle, your char broiler, whatever you decide to go with on your range comes with a stainless steel cover. So when you're not using it, you don't have to look at it. You just cover it up, right? It's just one of the great things about having the griddle. All right. So last thing we're going to do, we're going to add a little bit of our green onions here just to the middle. Give those a quick little wilting. And once that's done, make that hole. 
a little bit of soy sauce. Just cook that out really quickly. All right. So again, I know it's not something you're going to do every night, but just think about the possibilities. And that's, that's what I like to think about a wolf appliance, a wolf cooking appliance, is that it opens up so many possibilities for you in your kitchen, right? The inspiration that it can lend, right? So some days you may just want to make grilled cheese sandwiches. Very simple, make the kids really happy. But on other days, maybe you want to do something a little more extravagant. Knowing that you have the appliance there that will help facilitate that, just opens up so many possibilities. And when you think about the reliability and the performance of these appliances, it really is remarkable how much you can learn to do by having this appliance in your kitchen. So look how easily that comes off. And then if I need to clean it, I'll just take my scraper. And now, my griddle is ready for the next time I'm ready to use it. So we're just gonna garnish it with a little bit of crispy shallots on there, cause hey, what's better than that? And then maybe a little bit of sesame seeds as well. And then last but not least, we'll add the last of our green onions just across the top to set off the color for our crispy pork fried rice, right? So let's, before I let you go, right? Let's just make sure you can see our custards and how beautiful those have turned out. So let's just pop those out of the refrigerator. So our beautiful custard, we've got some lovely marinated strawberries that we've just marinated with a little bit of sugar and of course a little more Grand Marnier because who can ever have too much of that? Uh, I for one, no, I cannot have too much, right? I love it. And we're just gonna top off our quick custards that we made today in the convection steam oven with our fresh berries. If you wanted to add a little whipped cream, by all means, feel free to decorate the tops of the berries and the chocolate custard with the whipped cream. But because I don't wanna make a lot of noise with the mixer, I'm just gonna use a little powdered sugar because it just looks good. So, and that's just gonna absorb really quickly and now we've got our beautiful chocolate custards to go as the accompaniment to our chicken thighs and to our lovely fried rice. So there we go. Just a quick, brief introduction into the line of Wolf and Sub-Zero appliances. I do, do heartily recommend that you come in, spend some time in the with a consultant at one of our showrooms. You're going to find that that time is invaluable to the planning of your new kitchen, your new home, whatever it might be, just give you the breadth and the width of everything that we can do here at Sub-Zero and Wolf and Roth Living. So, if I don't get to see you before the holidays, everyone have the happiest of holidays, safe and enjoy time with your family, and hopefully you'll enjoy time in your current kitchen, or if you have a wolf kitchen, enjoy time in your kitchen for that. We look forward to seeing you again here at the culinary scene, not only for another, uh, demonstration of our products, but also perhaps for that ownership experience to teach you the very best ways to use these remarkable appliances. Thanks and have a wonderful evening.